So this is Microtoner, which is a four voice, uh, two operator FM um, microtonal synthesizer. And one of the neat features about it is that it is programmable. Um, so I'm going to jump right in. On the front page, we have four uh, keyboards. The bottom one is larger than the three above it. Uh, and we can set the voices that each of these keyboards, each one controls its own voice to drone if we want. Uh, but that's the keyboards. Um, and they go up in pitch as you go up the page. Uh, and every uh, sixth note will be the same as the first note above it. Uh, the, the notes are indicated, but they don't mean anything because these get rescaled for the microtonal process. Um, so they're more of like a reference guide than they are any sort of accurate representation of the tone you're playing. Um, but the second page is where all the interesting stuff happens. So uh, across the top we have radio buttons that select different mic e equal tempered, I should say. All of these uh, microtonal scales are equal tempered. So they have to be equal divisions of uh, an, an interval, interval. But we have 5 tet, 7 tet, uh, 19 tet, 23 tet, Bolin Pierce, and then two of uh, Wendy Carlos's uh, microtonal scales, alpha and beta. I didn't put gamma in because I didn't like it as much, but you could program it in, which is what this first option is, which is called user. So right now I have it programmed to 5 tet. If I play the 5 tet, and then I switch over to the user program, They should sound identical. And the way that this is programmed is that you have these three user adjustable parameters. Right now they're set to 1, 1, and 0.4. And I tend to start with the greater values on top and work down, but you can set them however you want. Basically what you're doing is you have um, the reason why this is 5 tet is the way that you derive 5 tet is to divide 12, 12 tones in an octave by 5, because a 5 tet scale moves through the octave in 5 intervals instead of 12. Um, and the outcome of that is 2.4. So we have 2, 1, Another one plus one plus 0.4 equals 2.4. So if you wanted a traditional 12 tet uh, scale, you know the normal keyboard, you would program in just point or just one. And if you wanted uh, 24 tet, it'd be 0.5 uh, because that's just how the math would be done. But you don't have to use these sort of equal divisions, you know, the Bull and Pierce and the, um, <clears throat> the Alpha and, and uh, Beta and Gamma use their own sort of more intricate divisions of the, you know, octave. So it, it's really just a matter of, of playing around and you can find a bunch of different uh, microtonal scales just by adjusting these and seeing what happens. Um, you don't have to be super intentional about it either. You can just dial something in. Uh, so the next control is the reference pitch. This is on the keyboard, the lowest uh, note played. So the lowest note played right now is an A1. 
There's also a MIDI mode, which is why I have my Roland S1 over here, because it's a very small, not great uh, MIDI controller, but I can switch over to MIDI control. Um, and then I want to change the reference pitch to something that makes more sense with this sort of controller. Because on the, the keyboard controller, uh, the pitches will only go up, but here we can have them go above and below a reference pitch. And that reference pitch doesn't have to be uh, a stable integer. Um, you, you know, if you never want to deal with stable integers or, or stable intervals or traditional intervals, you know, you could get off this, uh, you know, and just tune to whatever frequency you want. But I'm going to use C4. There's some slewing going on here. Oh, right. I wanted to turn the slewing down. Uh, the slewing on the, the, when you're playing on the, the Zoya itself, uh, only affects the notes in that row controlled by that voice. And this is a little quiet. Uh, because um, the uh, MIDI version will have velocity, but this little keyboard doesn't have velocity, so it's sending a fixed velocity. And I can change that scale. Let's do uh, Bull and Pierce which is one of my favorites. Uh, and then the rest of the patch is pretty straightforward. We've got an attack and decay for the envelope. Um, we have, oh, this part's a little bit less straightforward. <laughs> I'll instantly refute myself. Uh, there, there's actually, it's a two operator FM synth in a traditional sense that there is a secondary oscillator that modulates the carrier that we hear and we can adjust that um, offset, you know, uh, so. Get some sort of metallic tones. But then there's a, a fixed oscillator that FMs all of the voices. It doesn't track pitch like this other oscillator does. Uh, it just affects all of them from the same pitch, so you get different tonal aspects. So right now it's at a pretty low frequency, like an LFO. And we can hear it affecting the, the timbre and pitch in that way. Uh, if we take it up into audio ranges, though, it changes quite drastically. So it just, it's a, another way to add movement and, and texture to the synth. You know, two op FM can be pretty simplistic. It's nice. There's a lot you can do with it. It's more versatile than it seems, but it is, you know, again, more limited. And so this was just a, a relatively CPU cheap way to add, you know, I might have added a ring modulator. I tried that out first. I didn't like it as much as this. So this was sort of along that line of, of just adding some other harmonic uh, element to play around with. Um, then there's a global high pass filter. Um, sometimes FM can get a little boomy, so you can use that to sculpt the low end and a reverb light with the uh, decay and mix, and then a slew parameter. Um, the slew will work a little bit weird when you're doing MIDI control because it'll sort of slew uh, every fourth note, which is can have an interesting effect. Turn 
this up a lot. It's a little bit unpredictable, but it, it has some interesting outcomes because it is unpredictable. Uh, but that's microtoner. Um, I think it's cool. Uh, I think you can do a lot of sort of sci-fi sort of soundtrack stuff with it. Um, you know, it, it has been fun to explore microtonality, which is not something I've paid a ton of attention to before. And I sort of thought it was maybe, again, something you only hear in sci-fi soundtracks, but... Um, I found some sort of interesting ways to play with melody uh, using this, you know, let me get a percussive sound. Oh, right. I'm in mini mode. get some you know interesting melodies out of out of it that you wouldn't find in a more traditional 12 tet uh scaling um so you know it, it's i think it's a, a really uh interesting way to sort of unlock things you know maybe you can apply those to another instrument or how you you know, think through a melody because, you know, the other aspect is that uh, even if you're using a sort of traditional control surface like a MIDI controller, it's going to operate differently. Let me switch back over to MIDI control. Notes aren't going to be quite where you expect them to be. So that's Microtoner. Um, if you check it out, thanks for checking it out. Um, and if you like it, please like it on patch storage. Uh, that's all I've got today. Have a good day. Bye.